Hello and welcome to the St. Louis Online. I'm Pete Smith, co-chairman of the 40th National Narrow Gauge Convention Planning Committee. The video you are about to watch is part of a series of clinics and layout tours presented as a virtual but slimmed down version of our narrow gauge convention, which had to be canceled due to the coronavirus. We thank all of our presenters for their support and for allowing us to share their work with you. Our thanks also to Russ Segner, Robin Peel, and Burr Stewart for producing this series. For more information on this video and others, go to our website at 40ngc.com. We hope you enjoy the program that follows. This morning, we have three clinics. We're going to lead off with Don Railton, who's going to give a clinic on building from scratch. Many of you who have read a lot of the publications on uh, good model of scratch building have seen some of his articles. So Don, it's all yours. Okay. Um, greetings from the Adirondack Mountains of New York State. Uh, I live just outside of Saratoga Springs, New York. And that's a, a well-known uh, racetrack there, horses. And uh, this is the season for the racing. The racing's going on, but one thing different this year, never done this before. They have the horses there racing, but they have nobody in the stands. Uh, so uh, things have really changed. But I'm glad I did get to go to the St. Louis Narrow Gauge Convention. Uh, I'm very happy that I got a chance to do this. I like this little cartoon, uh, uh, Craftsman Caboose Kit, and it's a block of wood and an exacto. Um, this is kind of the, my modeling, I guess. I've never bought a Craftsman Kit. I don't have anything against them, but um, uh, I like to do everything from scratch. I can't stand looking at instructions. I like to wing it, so. I pretty much build structures. I do some, a few other things, but it's mainly structures. And I've done those particular five scales. Um, I've noticed one thing about working in all of those scales, they all have their pluses and they all have the minuses. I've done articles for um, Modeler's Annual, if you remember that. It was a great magazine. Uh, it's no longer out there. Um, Russ has uh, retired. The famous Narrow Gauge Gazette and then AK Interactive, which is uh, some of you may know as European uh, publication you can get in the US. I've made some how-to videos for Train Masters TV. Why do I scratch build? Uh, it allows me 100% of control of the design. So if I'm going to do a building, I can either dream it up in my head or I can take a picture of one in my neighborhood or I can uh, go on the internet uh, and find something that I like uh, or I'll see two or three that I like and I can add them together and uh, build whatever I want. So that's really, really the reason that I, I like scratch building. And my idea philosophy, there's a building you could model. Now that's a real boring looking building to me and it would be a real bore, I think, to build that. And anybody that's looking at it might not be too interested. Now that's a neat building. That is beautiful. And in fact, there's a few people, I saw this on the internet, there's a few people that have built this so far. That is an interesting building. So when you look at the two of them, one's going to be very interesting to build and it's going to be very interesting for people to look at. So I would go with that idea. And I just happen to like kind of depression era. And I like, uh, you know, rotting wood and horrible looking brick. And I like, um, I guess, uh, well, I like two things. I like bait shops and gas stations for some reason. And one last thing, KISS, which stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. If I have 15 steps I have to take to make wood look like it's in bad shape, I get bored very quickly. So I do very simple things, and I'll show those to you here in a couple of seconds. 
start off with keep it simple stupid i have a lot of tools but i'll tell you that 95 percent of my time i spend with these right here obviously paintbrush um but i've got my sandpaper my dull exacto my sharp exacto my metal ruler and a box cutter and that is if I lost any one of those, I would be out of business. I've got my Dremel and a few other nice little things, but uh, and I go to them from time to time, but I spend 90, 95% of my time with those tools right there. Uh, what I wanna do is uh, do a step-by-step -step scratch build uh, of both wood and brick. And how I wanna show you this, starting with wood, this was a picture I got off the internet. It's a great old station that's sitting somewhere. And I thought I would just do the side of the building. Um, the wood here, the door, window, and then a very nice brick foundation. So to start off, what I do is I take um, graph paper and I draw it to uh, kind of a scale that I want. This was, I believe, in 132. And um, there's my, my door opening, my window, and then the foundation's down here. So I, I get that, so it looks like it's at the right size and it's 132 and I, uh, I always do doors at six and a half feet. So that's how I measure my, my uh, scales. And then uh, once I have that drawn up, and I do one side at a time, keep it simple. Then I get my poster board, which you get in any art store. I, I've, uh, you get it at Walmart, actually. I cut a piece of poster board out. And if you look in the back here, actually, if I, I cut out the picture that I just had drawn. But I've got, I put my lines in and I've marked where the door's gonna be, where the window's gonna be from the top, bottom and sides. And then I've marked those areas with the crosshatch. And I cut the door and the uh, window out. Uh, keeping these lines along that I've drawn in, which will come in uh, in a minute here, is very helpful. I'm not gonna go into each of the steps here, but that right there is a window. And this right here is the door. And I just build them the way you would build a window or a door. Um, there it is without any anything else involved as far as weathering yet. Uh, people always ask me, what's the doorknob? It's very complicated. That is one little dab of white glue. Once you paint it, it looks like a doorknob. Next step, I take, uh, I usually, I use a, acrylics 99% of the time and this is a black washed out acrylic and I take my brush and I just dirty up the window and the door I never when I'm going to paint now I've got my white paint my white acrylic I um I never brush it on I stipple I didn't know what that word was until an artist told me about it. And all you're doing is taking that brush and you're dabbing it on the surface. And slowly the, the background starts to disappear. Uh, if you put too much of it on, you've got it too thick. Um, I wipe it off before it dries. And then I put a little bit more of that wash of that black on. There's the window finished at an angle, and there's still plenty of, looks like there's paint that has been removed from it. Uh, this right here is the door finished and the painted doorknob. Um, looking at it now, I wish I had used a little bit of less white, but that's pretty much how I decided to finish it. And then I plugged them in to the wall. Just glue them in with, I use tacky glue. If you know anybody familiar with that, it's kind of a thick white glue. So the next step, I got to put my siding in, which would be um, 
strips of basswood, and this happens to be 132 thickness. I've got my dull exacto. I don't use a metal brush. I tried that and I got these parallel lines that you don't see in the real world. So I take this and I uh, take the exacto and I scrape it, usually sideways, to get a groove in it. People say, why don't you use the sharp exacto? Because when you get done putting the grooves in, you can't see them. With the dull one, it's thicker and you can see the grooves. In fact, uh, if you can see that in the picture, you can see where parts of it are dug out right here in this area. Now I've got as a guide my lines that have been drawn in and I um, put the wood in. What I usually do is I usually weather them a little bit before I get them in because I like to have a difference. Uh, in other words, this one here is about it's got quite a bit of weathering that's in the groove and this one here doesn't. I like to get that difference in it. So I'll, I'll darken these up and then using the lines as a guide, I finish up the side of the wall with the, um, the pieces. Okay, there it is finished, not, well, not completely finished. Um, you can see that there's some areas that have the uh, darkness from the acrylic, the black acrylic, and the other areas are a little bit less. There's some areas right in here. And I, one thing, people ask me if I put brown in. I don't. Every piece of really worn wood I've ever seen in my life in upstate New York is gray. Different light, dark gray, but it's gray. I don't see really any other colors in it. The building was green, so then uh, I used the green acrylic a little bit deeper at the top and less at the bottom as you would see in a building that has a, a roof on it, a little more protection. And then the number, which was on the door, was pretty simple. That was, uh, I just do a, a, a print of it and glue it on. So that was the actual number that was in the picture. I love my yellow post-it signs because these buildings, most of that I do, or some of that I do, uh, end up being uh, you know, dilapidated and you're not supposed to go in there. And then on the door, don't forget the little slot for the mail. One other thing about it that I use, but I don't do a real heavy job of it. The studs, which uh, I understand are between 16 and 24 inches apart. Um, so when I put the studs in, I want them to be, I don't want them to be all over the place. I want them to be in lines, but I want to, I don't want it to show up as if when you look at a wall, the first thing you're gonna see is this line of these rusted nails going down. I, I very seldom see that. I, I, when I see these buildings, I do see the ruts and nails, but you got to get up close to see them. Um, so I do a very kind of a subtle job. So if you're looking closely at it, such as right here and down in here, you can see the nail heads with a little bit of, uh, I use uh, different shades of rust. I use a paint called gouache, type of paint called gouache and acrylic. Um, it's very expensive, but it's fantastic to use. It it stays in a liquid form. It um, It's flat as can be. And if you don't like what you just did an hour later, you can wash it off and do it again. Uh, here's some examples of some of the uh, wood models that I've built. This is 132 scale Leopard Shark Bait Shop. This is mainly all of the um, the wood is well there's 116 and 132 basswood um, i also use balsa wood a lot of these uh posts are made out of balsa wood balsa looks really great as a rotten wood it's hard to work with sometimes you can break pieces that you're working with uh, i didn't think it would work at all i thought it would get wet and just fall apart like a piece of paper it dries nicely, so um, I've been using balsa. 
Here's a close up of the side. Uh, this would be a building that doesn't have any paint on it left at all except for on the door. Uh, there's the lines that are visible. And it's that gray color. Here's a shot around the back um, with all the detail. And all of this was done with this, the same idea using the nail holes, uh, the gray, and dig it in with the uh, the exacto. It's a little bit closer shot. 132 is nice because you can actually see the paint cans and what's written on them. I'd really like 148 a lot too. 148 is good. Um, and this was all taken off the internet of actual paint cans and then printed. Um, real card shed. This was in. Um, uh, let's see, what was this in? This was in uh, Mahler's Annual. And uh, it was in, um, there was one other one, and I can't think of the other one it was in at the moment. Um, this is 124. And uh, another building that doesn't have any color to it because of the worn. Here's another shot with the interior. Uh, this is how it started out. I built this little section here and I thought I'd need the rest of the building to put put on it. A um, little bit different color here. Because this is in the interior and it's so protected a bit more than this area here, which doesn't have a roof on it. There's a close up the inside. Oh, that's the, I found this car that my son built when he was a kid and we didn't complete it. So I decided to mess it up and put bullet holes in it and throw it inside. Uh, another shot interior. Here's a bird's eye view. I got to tell you this. This is uh, this was uh, on the cover. This is the only cover I have ever had. Models annual. So when this got on the cover, I had to do one thing. I made a little tiny copy of it and I put it on the uh, the workbench inside the building. Every once in a while, I, it, I've had this displayed a lot. You bring people over and let them know that uh, that's actually the cover on Model Zena, which is the front of the building. Uh, Popeye Village. This was a movie that uh, Robin Williams was in. Uh, the movie wasn't that good, but they built a fantastic cartoon village. Uh, so this is a very cartoonish looking building, but I love doing it. Um, this one, I really kind of just, you know, I didn't care about the the studs in this one. They're all over the place, but it was fun to do, you know, and the, uh, the chimney, uh, got a kick out of doing that one. That, um, I remember the siding on that was plywood, 164 plywood, which is nice to scribe. It, it's really good. Uh, pretty good to work with and you can, um, it's easy to cut. Um, very thin in the uh, larger scales, but pretty good for 187 or 148. And here's the one structure that I did that turned out to be a caboose. Uh, same deal. Um, that was, I think, 100% uh, 132nd basswood. Um, and then I, if this is 132nd, I got some 135 detail parts for it, so if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. 135 detail parts that work great with 132. Uh, then a bait shop. This is 124. Uh, you can build all your uh, detail parts with 124, a lot easier. Um, this here, uh, there's a uh, stud going down with some nails. Um, what I did with this, it was a little bit different. You can see the, it's got paint on it and it's worn off. 
um, I don't know if I'd do this again, but it seemed to work out here. I, what I did was I put this uh, uh, crackle medium, which I've never had any luck with, and I just tested something. I put it on underneath. When I say underneath, I put it on the board that I had weathered, and then I painted uh, white over the top of it. And then I took uh, a paper towel and I dabbed at it, so I was lifting the paint off. Uh, so, in other words, right here and here, the the, mate the uh, material was located because the paint won't stick to it. And then over here, there wasn't any. So it was kind of an idea of, of I guess people used to use uh, in the past, maybe they still do with I um, uh, can't remember the name of the. the uh, Oh, was something you used in school. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. You dab it on the wood and then you paint over and the wood won't stick to where this, it's a kind of a gooey material. It's the same idea as that. Uh, and I thought it worked out pretty good for this. There's another shot in the sun, I guess, out in the back. Is give you the idea. It's pretty large. One, one twenty-four. Last one I'm going to show you the lobster wharf. Uh, this was done many years ago. Um, I would change things around, but I think overall it came out pretty good. I had to give that uh, distressed look to the wood. The um, roof here. That's all one. 64 plywood cut in pieces individually and then glued in okay brick uh here's the building again there's our foundation and that's brick right there and that is of, in my opinion a very boring looking wall and there's a great looking wall look at that wall that's beautiful that's real that's not a model i'd like to tell you i i modeled that but i didn't uh that is really an interesting looking wall it has all kinds of different colors it's got different shapes uh, great wall so what i do here is i i've got my side and i need my foundation so I draw the foundation on the graph paper and I take a piece of styrofoam, uh, it's either blue or pink from the hardware store. I cut it out the way I did the, uh, the walls for the, uh, with the wood, get my dull exacto and my straight edge. And then I just using the lines as a guide, I cut in the uh, brick. It doesn't take as long as you think it would. You just need to take breaks, that's all. Um, once I've got it in, I force parts of it down so that I, if you looked at it sideways, you'd see little hills and valleys uh, as you would in a worn brick wall. Then I put a base coat of uh, gray on. And then I get my colors out now, raw umber, burnt umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, black and white. And I just color it up. And the only thing missing from it is the mortar. And I use spackling. And I put the spackling in on the surface. And then I take the exacto and kind of work it in a little bit. And then the last step of that, I put it on my, put the water on my fingers and I force it in. Um, one thing I didn't show in this, I don't think, right, there it is, it's finished. Uh, what I have to do is that spackling is white, white as can be, and it looks fake. Um, so what I do is I just take a thin wash of black, and um, run it through 
and uh, you get that dirty, dull look to the spackling, and I think it looks more authentic. Here's some of the brick buildings I've done. Uh, this was the first one I ever did, 148. Uh, this one, the bricks are probably a little bit bigger than they should be for 148, but I think it came out all right. Um, I individualized some of the bricks. I don't know if I would do that again. I'd rather just paint the whole thing, you know, kind of a variety of colors. There's the back side of it. And then the front, I did uh, a little fancy work on the corners. That's all styrofoam. This is, um, this was a, a, a contest for, it was called the peanut butter lid contest, the di diorama peanut butter lid. That's a four inch diameter base. And so I just took the styrofoam. This is, this thing is about 95% styrofoam and uh, carved out this little wall and then the base to it. And then there's a railroad track in there. All styrofoam. This is another one that I did, uh, that I entered in a similar this is a building in Philadelphia. I found this on the internet. And so I decided to do it in styrofoam with a little bit of wood here for the front. That was in Modeler's Annual. Um, give this, there we go. I like the brick on this. This was really, I didn't try to do a good job. I tried to get it look like that first brick uh, wall that I showed you. Um, let me go, yeah. this was actually, that's plywood, but it's not really plywood. It, it was plywood in the picture. That was a picture that I got off the internet of the building and I just, um, glued it in to a piece of 164 plywood that was uh, behind it. And the same with the posters in the window. Um, styrofoam here, uh, styrofoam sign, and then uh, of course spackling uh, placed in and then dirtied up. That gives you an idea of the scale. Now, 187. I'd like to tell you I carved that, but I didn't. Uh, and I've worked with 187. I like this scratch build 187, but I'm not gonna be carving 187 brick. Um, Monster Model Works, which is, I guess, back in business now. I don't have any connection with them, but they make really nice laser cut sides, if you've ever used them. So I, I bought some of it and um, painted it up. And then I uh, used the spackling uh, you got to use it very thin, but it's 3D. It's the 3D brick wall. And uh, I, I'm, I, anybody out there that can carve brick in 140, uh, 187, hats off to you. That's my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page. Uh, I can tell you I wasn't really interested in Facebook until I, People like Chuck Doan and a few others uh, have Facebook pages. Good enough for Chuck, it's good enough for me. Those of you who know Chuck Doan, I bet you a lot of you do. Um, it's a great place to see people work in uh, all kinds of different things. Um, standard gauge, narrow gauge, military, automotive, you name it. Um, a lot of inspiration. So uh, feel free if you use Facebook, uh, you'll know my site, Don Railton, and this is my logo, a Chihuahua looking at a Great Dane. And then, there's another Don Railton there, he's a great photographer, but uh, uh, he doesn't have a Chihuahua and a Great Dane the last time I looked. Um, I got a few minutes, I want to show you a couple other things of um, 
artists that I find to be very talented. And they're scratch builders. Mentioning Chuck Dolan, I'll just zip through. This is some of Chuck's work. He's gone into the larger scales. I believe this is 116. Um, that's just, uh, you know, I mean, that's something to strive for. That, the wood, uh, back, it, it, it's just incredible detail. Incredible detail. Take a picture of that, and I mean, that looks real. One of my favorite artists. I met him in California at a narrow gauge show. That's another one of his interior shots. And that's something. I believe that's a 148 model. I might be wrong. And that's his gas station, the interior. That was a, he had that in Santa Clara. I haven't seen this one live, but that's a narrow gauge. I mean, that's just spectacular. Ken Hamilton, some people may know Ken Hamilton. He's a good friend of mine from New Jersey and he's been making models for years and years. Uh, this is this is an actual picture of the building. He's living down in North, uh, North Carolina, I believe, South Carolina. And there's his model of it. I think this is probably a 124 scale. And he's like another Chuck Dolan. He asked me. I think he's the nicest guy. Um, and I've met him at the shows uh, in the past. And um, he, he's got a, uh, a site on Facebook. Um, the attention to detail is second to none. This is good. This was, uh, he, he's um, with his art league, I guess, down, down, uh, down south. And he's uh, had his, a uh, lot of his, uh, models on display and if you know who that is Bill Murray he came to one of the shows and uh, I can't remember what this one was you can see the edge of it here what I don't understand is all the children clothes in the back I guess they set up in different shops and they um, they exhibit their artwork this I, I don't know this gentleman he's on Facebook he does 124 he does this for a living he's a fairly young guy um, large scale and everything. I probably 112. Uh, and he gets that gritty urban look. Look at that. I've been in stores that look like that. I hate to say, but uh, some of you have too. I'll bet. And 124, I believe that is. So I like to look at his uh, his work for inspiration. There's a nice one that he's got framed. He makes his living doing it. This one here is amazing. This is a young guy, I think in Poland. I came across on Facebook. He takes a picture of this equipment he sees sitting around the fields, wherever, and he builds it uh, scratch. And his, the detail, the um, weathering is just fantastic. And it's one of his models. The paint, the rust, the dirt. And I have probably one, I believe 124. I like the buckets got water in it and the holes in it, just like the picture of the one that he, of the actual one he took. Fasten your seatbelts for the, the, this next little bit of information on this same artist. It's all made out of paper. Those models are all made out of, he cuts the paper and glues it together. Uh, the windows and whatnot and the tires are not, but 95% um, of those models are made out of paper. If I got a minute, the last one I wanna show, uh, this is a gentleman I believe in South Korea and this is for anybody that's into end scale and super detailed end scale to me. I just love to see it. You don't see it that often, but he um, is it, he works in one, one fifty. So a little bit bigger than N there's uh, the prototype and there's his thumb and look at that detail that he did there. 
That's these Chuck Dolan in one one fifty. That's one of his buildings. These are Asian buildings. He lives in let's say South Korea, I believe. Uh, and his detail in this small scale. I mean that would be nice on a, a layout. A detailed building like that. There's another one. And I, I, you know, I noticed that when I'm in the smaller scales and I want detailed parts, I can find them sometimes at 148, 187, 132, 135. But uh, when you get down to the real small scales, you can't do your own. I can't. Well, what he does, he makes his own detail parts. There's his thumb. There's some of the detail parts. There's a shovel he made. And you can see his fingerprint pretty good on that. 1150. So he's another one who's on Facebook and is, uh, I'm not going to try to do it in 1150, but I mean, that to me is absolutely incredible. And that's all I had. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Robin, Don. You've got some questions uh, monitored there. Yes, I do. Um, thank you, Don. I uh, was amazed by both the larger scale and the, certainly at the end of that Korean or Japanese gentleman that was uh, in 1150. Uh, yeah, my mind can't get over doing a shovel that size. <laughs> um, I, have, um, I have about six questions that came up during the chat. So I think most of them are pretty quick, like asking about specific products or techniques. So I'll start from the top. Um, Don Strenger asked, uh, what's the name of the wash that you use? He couldn't make out the name you mentioned for the Okay, wash. all I do is I get acrylic paint uh, and I use sometimes just basic. If that's one of the name brands of the large tubes. Or mm -hmm. um, uh, Apple Barrel is another one. I, I don't really care which one I get. And I just take that and I just add water to it. Okay. Alcohol, but I usually use water, and that's all the wash is. Black oh, okay. and water. I know a lot of the military modelers have a vast array of washes they use, you know, for aircraft and military vehicles and so on, but you're just diluting just regular paint down to actually get the same effect. You know, uh, AK Interactive sent me a box of stuff, and um, I haven't used any of it yet, but they mm -hmm. have everything you can think of, you know, dirty yeah. snow and every other, yes, right. Yeah, but for me, it's black acrylic and water. Okay. Um, so Bill Obanoff asked, uh, who's our next presenter, I believe, he asked, uh, "What thickness of balsa are you using for that horizontal siding, and, and do you cut the balsa by hand?" Okay, um, the siding was not balsa; that was the um, basswood. Okay. Um, I tell you that I buy the balsa; it's probably quarter-inch dowels. And then I take those, and if the, it's going to be squared off, I just cut them down with the sharp exacto, or I'll take the sharp exacto if it's going to be a uh, diameter, and then I just start carving it down. It doesn't take much to carve down balsa. Okay. Um, and I, uh, somebody asked, um, yeah, you mentioned you were doing that distressed paint on wood and you're saying you put some goop underneath to make it work. My recollection is that the kind of glue you, people usually use that is uh, what I would in cement. England, I would, rubber cement. Yeah, there I you go. Good. Good. And I put that on the chat and people are saying, what? And it's like, do you not remember fixing your bicycle tire as a kid? And yeah, yeah so <laughs> rubber cement. So I remember, I remember I, I answered that with myself. So great. And then Jonathan asked, uh, what do you use to print the signs? An inkjet, print, an inkjet printer or a laser? I use an inkjet. Okay. Um, just a simple inkjet printer. Okay. Um, uh, Alan Pollock asked, um, he'd love to see a close-up of the locomotive shown on uh, the very first slide of your presentation. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you have that or whether no, I, I don't have it in this presentation. That was a uh, yeah, it's a porter that I um, didn't build that from scratch, but I dressed it up. Um, other than I, uh, I don't know how I could. That's small one on the. Well, you, I tell you what, I think it's on my um, 
Facebook page. Oh, okay. So, uh, so, so Alan, I think you probably find it on your Facebook page. Cool. If it is, then maybe I'll, I'll make a big one for him and I'll stick it on there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and Byron Osborne up here in the, the Northwest, he asked um, a, a real simple one. What's, what kind of board do you use for the base? And some other people said it's probably just foam core or poster board, but what kind of board are you using for your base, for your um, dioramas, your models? I can tell you uh, the small dioramas, the peanut butter lid ones, that's styrofoam. But in general, my dioramas, I just use pine really oh. as a base to pine to, I guess, from the, uh, you know, the hardware store. Um, okay. Just cut it up and paint it black. Okay. 